Good morning again, and welcome back to our Bible study of the book of Romans. Uh, we continue today with our uh, study of Romans. We're, we're nearing the end of Paul's letter to the church in Rome. We're in chapter 14 today. There'll be one more week of study of Romans, Romans after this. Uh, but uh, we've, we've been on quite the journey through the Christian faith with Paul and his uh, letter of instruction to the Romans. Um, our, our last few lessons uh, in Romans, Paul has been giving guidance to the Christians of the church uh, regarding their relationships within the church, uh, their relationships with the unchurched, and, and their relationship with government, as we talked about last week. In chapter 14, as we begin our, our study this morning, uh, Paul deals directly with conflict within the church. And, uh, you know, we don't think about that as being uh, an issue that uh, we, we even expect to deal with or want to deal with. But, but Paul has some, some guidance to us as to how to deal with issues of, of disagreement and conflict within the church. He, he teaches that Christians are to accept other Christians who are, he uses the word weak, in their faith. Now, uh, we'll talk more about what uh, that idea of being weak in your faith might imply here in a few minutes. Uh, Paul tells us that all believers are to accept each other, uh, that uh, whether we have a, a disagreements or not, that, that all believers are to be accepted. We're to celebrate uh, that we have brothers and sisters in Christ, whether we completely agree with some of their ideas or not. And, and he says that when we accept others, that's a reflection of Christ's acceptance of us. And, and, and that brings glory to God. When we accept others, that brings glory to God. So, so Paul's addressing some problems today that involve behavior that in and of itself is neither good nor bad. Uh, but the way believers were, re were reacting to the behavior was creating conflict in the church. Um, and, and the two major problems that, that he discusses today, uh, that we're, and the part we're going to look at today, are dietary habits and then the special status of certain days, celebrating uh, and emphasizing certain days. Uh, and, 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 and these things were causing conflict among some of those in the Roman church. And, and Paul... Uh, Paul's argument is that this is unacceptable behavior. It's unacceptable to God. Uh, he says that he, he teaches that as, as servants of God, that we're responsible to God alone. That servants don't judge other servants. All of us Christians are servants. And so, and so Paul's point here is that it's not our place to judge other Christians. That's, that's God's job. Masters judge servants. And God is our master. So, so we are responsible to our master. Our master is Jesus. Our, our, our master, master is the Lord and Savior. Um, so, so a believer who judges another believer uh, was really, in a way, uh, usurping God's authority here. Uh, with his own, he was, he was making himself a judge when, when actually God is the righteous judge of all Christians. Um, and, and our author makes this statement. I wanted to just read this to you and share it. He says, he says, this is from the author now, Since the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy, believers should be pursuing peace and building each other up. So with that uh, as, a, as a background thought here, let's take a look at chapter 14, uh, the first uh, uh, part of that uh, today, as, uh, as we see Paul's instruction to the church in Rome. So uh, we'll begin today with uh, Romans 14, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to just read that to you, Romans 14, verses 1 through 4. Paul writes this, he says, Accept anyone who is weak in faith, but don't argue about disputed matters. One person believes he may eat anything, while one who is weak eats only vegetables. One who eats must not look down on one who does not eat, and one who does not eat must not judge one who does, because God has accepted him. Who are you to judge another's household servant? Before his own Lord he stands or falls, and he will stand because the Lord is able to make him stand. 
All right, let's look at those at those four verses in some detail here. Verse one. Uh, so Paul begins using this word uh, that uh, that we uh, mentioned a few moments ago uh, about about someone who's who's weak in their faith. He says uh, he says uh, anyone we we should accept anyone who's weak in the faith. Now, in this context, it's clear that weak uh, probably is referring to uh, someone who uh, is uh, perhaps. Uh, I don't know, word I use sometimes is, is an immature Christian, not as a negative thing, but just as there's still stuff to learn. We all uh, can ought to be able to relate to that. That uh, that when we come to Christ, we are we are babies. Paul talks in other letters about how we're all all that we can all we can handle when we come to Christ is just milk, um, and and we can't eat solid food. We're we're weak in the faith, and and in this case, in the, in the Roman church here, probably uh, this weak in the faith idea is referring to uh, some of the Jews in the church who were holding on to older Jewish Jewish customs. Uh, these customs would involve food preparation, uh, food offers, the sacrifices, and so on. Uh, and we have to be careful because the word weak can can have this kind of connotation of, you know, I'm looking down on something here. Uh, I, I can see that, that, that they just aren't there. They aren't, they aren't quite up to the standards that I have here. Uh, and, and, and it can even imply an incomplete or uh, inaccurate understanding. But, but no, the key word here, uh, he says, any, except anyone who is weak in what? In faith. Uh, Paul knew that everyone had to go on a faith journey when they're saved. Uh, we all, by definition, don't know all there is to know about, the, about living a, uh, the godly life. Uh, as we grow and we learn, we become more complete. And that's true for us no matter how uh, mature of a Christian we are. Uh, we never know it all. We never are finished products, and we always have more to learn. And, and so Paul's uh, uh, point here is that as you look at someone who may be new to the faith, and maybe this word weak is uh, not one I would choose today, but, but someone who's, who's a novice in the faith, uh, he's saying don't, don't look down on them. Accept them. Uh, accept them. Uh, don't argue. He says, don't argue about disputed matters. Uh, if if these uh, 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 believers have different ideas about how to uh, observe certain habits or customs or or traditions, he says, don't argue about that. Now we'll talk some more about this in a few moments here because there are a few things about which we would need to, I guess you'd say, argue. But 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 the point Paul's making today. And the point he's talking about today is these ideas of dietary habits and of special holidays. And on these, he says, don't argue, don't argue, except uh, the, weak, the person who's weaker in faith. Uh, verse 2, he says, one person believes he may eat anything, while one who is weak eats only vegetables. And, uh, and, and we know that uh, Jesus even taught... Uh, and Paul does in other places too that that food uh, in and of itself is neither neither good nor bad, neither holy or evil. Uh, it's not the food that's the issue. Uh, and, and Paul didn't see the food here as his issue. Paul wasn't concerned about what was being eaten. Paul was concerned about, as as the Lord is also concerned about, the spiritual status of the believers and sp specifically the spiritual growth of the believers. This is number one on your handout. Paul was concerned about the spiritual growth of all believers. So this would be those who are who are uh, accepting of I can eat anything and, and, and there's nothing there's nothing off limits there. Uh, it would be it would be also those who say, well, but Jewish law has always taught me and I believe that I can't eat certain things. And and so Paul is saying uh, uh, this is this is uh, an issue that really, it's a non-issue. He says in verse 3, one who eats must not look down on one who does not eat. So if I'm in a place in my Christian walk where I have uh, complete confidence that uh, any food that, uh, that I uh, have placed before me is acceptable, there's nothing there, there's none of it that is, uh, that is uh, off limits in terms of uh, uh, being some forbidden food or some forbidden uh, preparation method or something like that. 
and, and, and if, I, if I'm at that place, I shouldn't look down on those who are not yet at that place, who do have qualms or questions about the kinds of things they should eat. And he says this, this, this cuts both ways. He says, still in verse 3, And one who does not eat must not judge one who does, because God has accepted him. Uh, and, and so it's easy for uh, some of us to, uh, who, who have been uh, Christians now for a good long while to look at new Christians and say, well, uh, they, they just don't understand yet or, or their understanding is not, not fully developed or whatever. Uh, and, and that's a form of us judging them. But, but Paul's saying here, and guess what? That can go the other way too. You've got to be careful about that. The, the ones who uh, probably in this situation, I mentioned a while ago, probably in this situation we were talking about Jewish dietary laws, uh, when what kind of foods were permissible and what kinds were not, how they had to be, be prepared, stuff like that. And, and, and so for those new Jewish Christians who, uh, who followed the Jewish traditional dietary laws, they might look at the uh, Christians who don't follow those laws because they know that's not uh, uh, necessary anymore. Uh, they might look at them and go, well, these people are are uh, not following tradition. They're not doing things the right way. They have, they have corrupted uh, their habits and their beliefs and so forth. Uh, they, 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 they just aren't doing what they should be doing. And, and Paul's saying, don't judge them. Don't judge. He says, uh, he says, because why? This is for both the, the weak in faith and the non-weak in faith. This last part of verse 3, he says, don't judge because God has accepted him. God has accepted all of these Christians. He accepts us all with all of our faults, with all of our, all of our uh, inadequacies and, and the failings that we make and so forth. God accepts them. And so Paul's saying this idea of arguing about what kind of food is okay to eat and what kind of food we shouldn't eat, he says that's really a pointless argument. Verse 4, he gets right to the point. Who are you to judge another's household servant? Before his own Lord he stands or falls, and he will stand because the Lord is able to make him stand. You see, uh, see Paul, this is number two uh, on, your, on your handout here. Paul was not talking about mere tolerance of others. It wasn't an idea of, oh, well, I'll put up with that poor that poor person, that poor guy, until he, until he finally shapes up and understands this. Paul's not talking about that. He says you, you should accept them. Don't judge them. You should accept them. They, they should be embraced as, as being your brother or sister in Christ. Uh, number three there on your handout, he's arguing for full acceptance of one another as Christ has accepted them. And that's the point he makes there in verse 4, that... that uh, the, that, the, that the judge should be the Lord uh, and, and, the, and it's through the Lord that he says he will stand because the Lord is able to make him stand all of our authority, all of our power uh, all that we have uh, spiritually is, is from the Lord's leading and teaching there uh, so the, the, the one eating everything is not to look down on the weaker believer because uh, God has accepted the weaker believer and the weaker believer is not to judge the one who eats anything for the same reason. God accepted him, too. So, uh, number four on your handout there, matters of false doctrine and unchristian behavior must be corrected. But in matters of religious practices, we need to show grace and acceptance, not judgment and disdain. And I want to really look at that. I mentioned earlier that there are some times when it is important for us to correct and 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 whatever uh believers and that is that is this if there is matters of false doctrine or unchristian behavior these must be corrected now uh, uh false doctrine and unchristian behavior would would be uh how, how do we how do we know that how do we judge that well uh we use the scripture as our as our reference there and when we see uh, a false doctrine in other words uh, a doctrine that a church or a believer follows that is 
contrary to what the scripture says, then that needs to be corrected. That needs to be dealt with. Uh, if we see unchristian behavior, that must be corrected. But now this unchristian behavior will be described in the scriptures. It'll be described in things like the, the Ten Commandments and so forth, okay? Uh, so, he say, so he says, look, really, when, when, when you get right down to the, to the, to the uh, non-negotiable baseline uh, parts of, of the Christian belief, the, those, if they're being misunderstood or misused, should be corrected. But in, in matters of religious practices, uh, he says, look, be, show grace. God did. God showed grace to you. He says, you do that too. Accept them. Don't judge them. Don't, don't have a bad attitude to, towards, uh, towards others. Uh, you know, now what would that look like in our, in our church today? Well, you know, the one example that I use a lot, uh, and it's just, uh, uh, a big, a bigger deal than you think it'd be to some people, but uh, it, you know, music styles and worship here, and and uh, some some uh, Christians uh, are uh, completely uh, committed to the traditional hymns, uh, and and that's the correct and proper type of music for worship in their opinion, whereas others uh, are are acceptable of the contemporary uh, worship style songs, and uh, and. Uh, and, and, and there, there are certainly cases, I don't know of any in our church here, but there are certainly cases where those divisions are so, uh, so etched in stone. People have such strong feelings about that, that there's been some real strife within churches here. Well, that's the kind of thing Paul's talking about. It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible you have to use this kind of music uh, in your worship service, and and so Paul's saying, look, if you if you if you like the hymns and they're playing they're playing contemporary worship music, he says, be gracious, just accept that, don't judge it, don't be disdainful, and of course the other way around too. If I'm if I'm more touched by the uh, uh, contemporary worship style music and, and and we're doing hymns this week and that doesn't speak to me, he again says, look, just go with it, it's okay, accept that, be graceful, don't judge. And, and don't don't have a, a negative attitude about that. So Paul is teaching here uh, about the, the the difference between the those foundational principles of the scriptures and those things that are really our own preferences, our own ideas, our own ways of doing things. Now you could expand that uh, idea even into looking at, uh, for example, in our in our community, various denominations. And uh, you know each each church, uh, each denomination will have slight variations on how they do things, their 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 worship uh, style and, and their worship order and their and the liturgy that they that they use and so forth. Um, and and Paul's saying, look, unless it's contrary to the basic pr principles of of uh, of Scripture, then he says, uh, accept it, be graceful. Okay. Now let's look at the next section here of our lesson today. This is uh, from. Uh, verses 5 through 8 of Romans 14. Let's read that to you. Paul says, One person judges one day to be more important than another day. Someone else judges every day to be the same. Let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. Whoever observes the day observes it for the honor of the Lord. Whoever eats, eats for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. And whoever does not eat, it is for the Lord that he does not eat, and he gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for himself, and no one dies for himself. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Okay, let's look at, at verse 5 here. And, and Paul introduces another issue that apparently is a source of some dis disagreement and conflict within the church. And that issue is the treatment of certain days. Now, this is likely referring to uh, Jewish Christians who were still observing Jewish uh, like feast days, uh, days of fasting, and so forth. Um, those believers uh, saw some days as being more sacred than others. And, and so they would look at those who did not uh, observe those days. Uh, they, would likely, they, they were likely being judgmental and, and looking down upon that. Uh, and, and then we have those who treat all days as the same, meaning that no uh, particular uh, festival or feast is of any particular greater importance than any others, uh, they, they would likely look down on those who didn't have that uh, mindset. Uh, and, and Paul says, uh, he says, uh, someone who 
uh, someone else judges every day to be, okay, I'm, I'm in the wrong place there. Uh, he says, let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. Now, uh, let each one be convinced in his own mind. Neither position is more correct. Neither one is is the, uh, you know, the holy, uh, you know, grail of, of correctness. Uh, and, and Paul is, is encouraging uh, the members of the church here essentially just to, hey, let it go. It's not something that is worth causing hard feelings, arguments, fractures in the church here. He says, he says, I know you're convinced in your own mind, but he's, he's basically saying just, just let it pass. Uh, verse 6, whoever uh, observes the day observes it to honor the Lord. He's saying, look, it's not about whether the day is any more important than any other day. What's, what it really is important here is, is the, uh, the heart. Uh, what are we doing? What are we celebrating this day for what do we set this day aside or what do we make this day be special for and if it's for the lord then then you know paul's saying honor that honor that uh and and in, in the same way he says if you uh for those who think they can eat anything they give thanks to the lord then the then the lord is honored and and for those who who are uh not eating uh uh unclean foods or whatever you want to call it uh they also give thanks to the, thanks to god and and god is honored by that so uh those seeking to honor god by the by the days did not uh that they did or didn't observe or by the food that they did or didn't eat uh should should recognize and appreciate that fellow believers can can have different ideas and not judge and not look down now verses 7 and 8 uh, he says uh, none of us lives for himself no one dies for himself if we live we live for the Lord if we die we die for the Lord therefore whether we live or die we belong to the Lord um, living for the Lord means that every aspect of our lives is done for the Lord that's number five on your hand out there. Uh, Christ is in control of every aspect of the way we live. And, and everything, uh, everything that we do uh, should be done for him. And, and, and by that I mean with him in mind. What, you know, it's, it's the uh, uh, old standby, what would Jesus do? Everything we do, we should be evaluated in the context of our, of our spiritual uh, uh, witness. Uh, and uh, number six on your hand out there, because uh, he talks about dying for the Lord. And dying for the Lord is an attitude uh, of reflecting the hope that we have in Christ who conquered death. Dying for the Lord is, is this idea that, that we have hope in Christ because Christ conquered death. Uh, God controls all aspects of our death. He controls the time and the circumstances and so forth. Um, and, and, and as with our lives, uh, so every aspect of our death also belongs to Christ. Therefore, our goal in life must be to honor him no matter the cost. And, and uh, Paul is, uh, is moving the Roman church towards an understanding that uh, the issues of food and special days are not important. What's important is our spiritual walk with the Lord and the fact that we uh, want to uh, uh, draw close to the Lord and at the same time uh, draw others along with us closer to the Lord. Okay, the last section of our scripture for this morning, verses 9 through 12. And Paul writes this, he says, Christ died and returned to life for this, that he might be Lord over both the dead and the living. But you, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow to me and every tongue will give praise to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Now, verse 9, uh, he, he, Paul says Christ died. He returned to life. And here's the reason. He says that he might be Lord over both the living and the dead. Okay? Uh, so uh, on your, on your uh, handout, number seven, uh, all Christians have one thing in common. All Christians 
uh, claim Jesus as Lord and Savior. Uh, so, so Paul says that, that the Lord is in control of everything and everyone who, who follows him. Uh, and then number eight on your hand out there, this thing we all share is infinitely more significant than any differences that separate us. Our, uh, our faith in Christ and our knowledge of Christ's saving, saving work on the cross and our, and, and, and our salvation, that is infinitely more important and more significant than the differences that separate us. Uh, and, and so anytime that we have disagreements within the church, uh, Paul is saying, hey, look, look, at, uh, look at what's really important here. Uh, this disagreement in the big picture uh, of your salvation experience and your, and your life and your, and your, and your afterlife, uh, this is not, the, this is not the, main, the main thing. It's not the main show. Uh, that, that it's what we have in common that we should dwell upon and we should look at. Uh, now, verse 10, uh, Paul says, uh, uh, why do you judge your brother and sister? Why do you despise your brother and sister? He says, we all stand before the judgment seat of God. Paul is challenging us uh, and teaching us that, that, uh, that if, we're, if we're judgmental, that we're, I, I mentioned this earlier, uh, that we really are, 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 are overstepping our authority and stepping into the authority that really belongs only to God. Uh, the, the, rather than judging others, we need to remember uh, that our position uh, is, is as one who God will judge. God will judge everyone in the church, including me. He'll judge that person who eats everything, that person who doesn't. He'll judge that person who observes uh, a special festival or a special day, and, and he'll judge that person who doesn't. He'll judge that person who is weak in the faith. He'll judge that person who is not, and so forth. And, and so Paul's saying, you know, why are you, why are you uh, becoming... Uh, uh, making this such a big deal uh, it really is what it amounts to here when when through our faith we know God will judge and we should we should have confidence and trust to just allow that to happen here okay now verse 11 Paul quotes Isaiah uh, and, and, you know and, and he, he says for it is written is written in Isaiah as I live says the Lord every knee will bow to me and every tongue will give praise to God uh, see God's uh, absolutely this is number uh, number nine on your paper there God's irrevocable truth is that everyone will appear before him at the judgment everyone um, no matter no matter uh, their faith or, or, or lack thereof their denomination whatever doesn't matter uh, everyone will appear before him at judgment time uh, number ten on your on your handout the knowledge that God will require from us uh, from us is an assessment of what we have done uh, and, and I've messed that up there you guys the knowledge that God will require from us is an assessment of what we've done and should curious, cure us of the judge, desire to judge or look down on fellow believers sorry about being clumsy on that I'm trying to say it the way it's written down on this paper here and I, and I fumbled that here but the idea is that, that God uh, will uh, will be our judge and therefore since we know that since we ex since we should accept that 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 should that that should remove from us and on our handout here it says it should cure us of the of the desire to judge ourselves uh, I can't judge I can't look down on fellow believers I can't do that I shouldn't do that because that's God's job and I uh, have complete faith and confidence that God uh, will carry that out and do so in a way that's uh, far superior uh, to anything that I would ever be able to come across and remembering that God's going to be judging me the same way. Um, so important concepts here regarding conflict within the church um, and, and I guess the bottom line on all of it is that uh, when there's disagreement within the church uh, check the Bible. If the Bible says specifically Here's, an, here's how something should be done, and that becomes one of those uh, uh, non-negotiable uh, uh, items there, and it should be corrected. But if it's not specifically in the Bible, it's a matter of personal preference or taste, uh, uh, personal experience, whatever, then, then these things we, we need to be tolerant of. And, and actually, as I said earlier, it's not, it's not really even tolerant. We, uh, I, I shouldn't have used that word. We should really, we should really just, just look past those and accept and, and celebrate that we have other brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, I want to close this morning by sharing a, a little, a little uh, uh, 
comment that the author of our material uh, wrote. And I just thought this was a nice summary here. So let me, let me just read this to you. Uh, our author says, Believers are to honor God regardless of what doing so may require. One way to do that in practical terms is to recognize the efforts of others who are also striving to please God, albeit in different ways. We can enjoy freedom to serve God as he leads us, but we also must allow others the same privilege. Our rights do not extend so far as to trample the practices of others. Our faith in God should guide us to act and treat others the way he guides us. I really like that uh, summary there and the idea that that, uh, that the author kind of brings into focus there that, uh, that uh, 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 we need to uh, allow others to have the same freedom to worship God in a way that's meaningful them, to them as we want to have for ourselves. And, uh, and, uh, and Paul, that's really the argument Paul's making here is that, is that uh, we, we shouldn't uh, uh, let conflict arise over these non-foundational uh, issues that might come up in a church. Uh, so, uh, so guys, uh, the color of the carpet in the, in the sanctuary, the music style, um, uh, you know, whether the, whether the, the pastor wears jeans or a suit, uh, you know, all those kind of things. Uh, although you may have, a, you may have a feeling about those. It may, it may be something that seems pretty significant to you, uh, since, you know, that's not, that's not those, uh, uh, foundational issues that we, uh, would find mentioned in the scriptures and, and cause us to uh, have to have to correctly uh, and scripturally correct uh, discipline or correct uh, all those things that are matters of personal preferences and just and just my likes and my experiences. Uh, Paul's teaching us and God's teaching us. Hey, uh, don't dwell on that. Dwell rather on the fact that we're all Christians. We all have this uh, really important thing in common, which is. Uh, we recognize Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. We know that he uh, came here, that he lived among us, that he died to accept all of our sins and take the punishment for all of our sins, and that, and that by accepting him we have eternal salvation. In light of those things, all the other agreements, the disagreements, I mean, that Paul's been talking about here are insignificant. Well, I hope that uh, that this is maybe a little helpful to you. And uh, again, I encourage you to uh, study your quarterly uh, and and also the rest of chapter 14 uh, of of Romans, uh, and and you'll find a great deal more information. We're just hitting some of the highlights here and some of the main key points. Okay, so uh, so uh, happy happy Sunday school lesson to you. And uh, uh, at this point in time, as I as I speak right now. Uh, this is May the 20th, uh, it, it appears that we may be able to have a Sunday school uh, on site at the church again in just a, just a very few weeks now. So we look forward to that and until such time as that occurs, well, I'll continue to record these things and, I, and if you get a chance to look at them, I hope you find them helpful. All right, let's close uh, and I'll pray please. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we again thank you Lord for your word as you instruct us in how to uh, live our lives uh, across every area of our life and specifically today lord our our lives as we relate to others in the church and as we as we perhaps have uh, uh, some uh, some some disagreements or or some differences of opinion uh, father i just pray that you would just continue to guide us to understand that we're all your children that you're the right judge and that uh, that our place is just to accept and love each other uh, Father, we lift up to you our pastor and the rest of the worship leaders. Pray for uh, pray for our services uh, that will be broadcast again online. But we're having them in, in, in person now, Lord. That you would uh, that you would just bless and keep us safe. And, and Lord, we pray that that all the all the preaching and teaching and and the prayers and the songs that they're all pleasing to you, Lord. Uh, pray that you find uh, that you find blessing in our worship. We love you, Lord, and uh, Father, we just give you thanks. In the name of Jesus, and I pray. Amen.